so before I begin, there's something I'd like to quickly talk about. You might have heard that about three weeks ago, there were multiple earthquakes in the southeastern region of Turkey, with very high magnitudes unfortunately causing a lot of casualties and many people being displaced out of their homes. It's a very tragic event and my country is in need of help. And I would very much appreciate it if you were to do so or just spread awareness to the message and I'll provide more information in the description as to how you can do that. Türk takipçilerim için de umarım hepiniz güvendesinizdir ve herhangi bir kayıp yaşamamışsınızdır. Hepimize geçmiş olsun. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new track guide video. Today we're at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Canada, Montreal. Yeah, this is one of my favorite circuits to drive on the F1 game and has been that way for a very long time and as well as one of my best in terms of pace wise. So I think today's track guide video will be very insightful, I hope. And yeah, this time we're doing something slightly different. So Codemasters decided to add the 2023 Alfa Romeo car into the game as a mode with separate leaderboards and time trials. So I took that for a spin and yeah, I guess I can throughout the video compare it to the 2022 car and how it handles and it should provide us some insights with maybe how the next game will work as well. So yeah, let's get into it. Right, so now moving on to the analysis of our lap. So heading into the final chicane as we start the lap, it's not actually that important to nail this corner at the start of the lap because the finish line is so so much at the end of the straight that your exit doesn't really matter. As long as you take it clean, you won't really gain or lose anything. But the one way where you can lose a lot is if you invalidate in the final corner and it automatically invalidates your next lap as well. So you have very little to gain and everything to lose so just take this a bit cautiously and cleanly or you can attack it, it won't make much of a pace difference i took it somewhat aggressively but anyway then you pull out onto the left hand side at the start of the lap now heading into turn one and turn two this is actually one of my favorite sections of corners on, on all of the calendar just because of how much you can attack it and it's complete opposite to how you start the lap at the last chicane. Now here you have very little to lose and a lot to gain. So what you want to do is you want to completely attack turn one under braking. And this is because the exit of the corner is literally non-existent because turn two comes up very fast. So you can completely attack it, brake very late, get off the brakes very aggressively as well and downshift hard. You want to maximize your time completely. So down to third gear, cutting the apex, and you want to go as deep as you can. I'm even getting on the power again. And be basically parallel before turn two. Because like I said, the exit of turn one doesn't matter since turn two approaches so fast. So yeah, you don't really follow follow the racing line of that the game suggests. Yeah, you want as much rotation as you can get. And you know, you can get that by being aggressive on the throttle between the corners as well. So now into turn two you're because of the line through turn one you want to 
like you're entering at a very narrow angle and ideally you want to touch the brakes gently like if you touch it too much you're going to get understeer and that's just going to hurt you all the way so touch the brakes as little as you can while getting the car slowed down and rotated and i think i did that okay and what you want to also do is use this curb on the inside to rotate the car further and you're going to see me use that right there and now something important with this corner and the track in general is that on ability to get on the power early can gain you a lot of time it's not that you get on the power and get good traction or everything smooth or anything you just want to be on the power that's that's what's the most important and you're going to see me pick up the throttle very early and short shift the third gear now the moment you pick up the throttle you stop applying aggressive new steering input otherwise that's going to ruin your exits and you're going to watch me repeat this a lot throughout the lap so third gear on the throttle as much as you can get but don't turn the steering too much so i'm keeping it fairly open and as soon as i get the car straight I'm full down on the power and yeah i got a fairly good exit but you know i think it just shows how much of a time you can gain by just being more aggressive that i actually lost half a tenth to my personal best uh here i mean personal best is not there but there's still another time to find now you can choose to completely stay on the inside here and gain some a few thousands but uh that makes the next corner turns to in turn four chicane quite difficult because the braking isn't really straight there is a risk of you touching the grass so ideally what i want to do is i just want to like enter it as straight as possible and just be be safe and don't really deal with that so Heading into this corner, very important to maximize the track limits on both apexes. And by that, I mean just straight up cut the corner. And I, I can actually just show it right here. So yeah, you want to go over this uh, red bit as much as you can. It's completely flat. And to achieve that, you want to break early. And uh, like if you, if you go in deep here, the second part is like you're going to mi miss this apex, and the second part is going to get even worse because the exit is really important. So you want to break early and break soft because if you break too hard, you're going to pick up understeer, and understeer is very harmful uh, at high speed in particular. So yeah, downshift to fifth gear, pick up the power early again. Like I said, like I'm on the throttle here before I've even reached the apex. So. Picking up the power momentarily on full throttle, but I'm going to lift off slightly as I go across the second apex because I don't want to hit the wall on the exit. But now you can see me completely maximize the track on this side as well. Now on the power again, and important, very crucial to keep the car in, in a stable motion through that section. So if you're sliding around, it's, it's just going to feel awful. But... Yeah, so you want to keep it stable and smooth through there. Now through this corner, just keep completely to the inside. It's very easy flat out, but yeah, just don't lose any unnecessary time here. And now heading into turn six, which is a very interesting corner in that, let me just move ahead. You can see that there's a very long exit. So theoretically, in all of racing, it should your approach should be slow in, fast out to maximize the exit. But this is not quite possible because the traction you get through here is generally just not very good. And like the exit there is completely curved. It's not a straight line. So if you do slow in, when you're trying to go fast out, you're just going to slide around a lot. And maybe I, I can explain this by saying f1 car generates more downforce at high speed so it'll be more stable so you want to deliberately overshoot the first bit so see how far i'm going through turn six and then get on the power very aggressively briefly before turn seven and use this curb to rotate the car you just pretty much like surviving by doing this but there's a lot of time to be found here and one further thing if you try to do slow and fast out and say like turn in very early you can get bogged down on this curb a lot like especially if you're on the red bit too much so i want to hug the red and white part of the curb and one further thing on the entry completely maximize the track like this is still within valid track limits 
don't touch the grass is what I'd say because then you just risk going completely wide. But anyway, uh, braking is kind of difficult here because you want, you don't want to rotate the car too much, but then rotate a good amount at the same time to be able to pull the car to this curb as you exit there. So through here, it's the best if you can stay as tight to the inside of the track as possible. But because of the line I'm taking in the previous corner, that's difficult to achieve. But the more you get on the power, the more the car rotates. So don't forget that. So you want to be very aggressive here and don't go onto this curb because it's very bumpy over there. Now we immediately pull back onto the right hand side for just minimizing the distance. And up to seventh gear, an important thing uh, that I've just been seeing some other people do when I'm not doing it and going faster is don't upshift the eighth gear through here. And the reason for that is it does not cost you straight line speed. The straight is not long enough for like revving out seventh gear to be harmful. And the next corner is challenging as, as it is with all of the other checks. And in general, the less you downshift, the more easier it is. So like going from eighth gear to fourth gear would be more difficult as opposed to seventh gear to fourth gear, which is what I'm going to do next there. So that's just going to be easier with rotating the car because it just takes less work to do so. So now heading into this corner, be careful with the wall sticking out from there because it's very easy to hit. That's why I don't approach the corner from the left-hand side. I come in from the right, like almost hitting it. And what you want to do is as, you, as you're coming here, you want to break, like I said, in a slanted way almost, get very close to this wall. I could have actually done it even more slightly, but it's not very important at this point. So break fully as you're moving towards the left. And after you get the car into a bit of a straight motion and you're preparing to turn, you lift off the brakes and aim for this curb. Very important for you to touch this curb because it just adds an element of stability. And as with every other corner on this track, get on the power very early. You can see me picking it up. Like even I'm nowhere near the apex yet, but I'm still getting on the power because of how important it is to be on the power early because it just carries all the way through as I'm accelerating here. So now across this curb, the moment you're going to hit this curb, you upshift to, up to fifth gear. And then very aggressive on the power immediately after you do that. The car just sticks. You have to practice a bit to get it right. But once you get used to it, I don't think it's that bad. So fifth gear, then through here, be aggressive as you can on the throttle. And yeah, just maximize the track on the inside. It's okay if you go onto, onto this curb, un unlike the previous straight. Then you pull the car to the left-hand side for minimizing the distance as always. And now onto the hairpin, which is a very different corner than pretty much every other corner on the circuit because the exit is straight for once or mostly straight for once, and it's not really a chicane. So it being a hairpin, you might want to think again, let's do slow and fast out because there's such a huge straight ahead you can see on the minimap. But the thing is, with the exit, if you break in too early and like try to get on the power early, like this part of the track is not a straight. So if you're running out too wide, like there's a risk that you won't be able to pull the car back onto the right hand side in time, or even maybe go into this wall, which I nearly did actually, but that's from a different reason. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to break too early. That can be harmful as well. And now if I go back a bit to the hairpin, so. Of course, you don't want to overshoot it as well. So you need to find the sweet spot and that just comes with practice. But the ideal thing to do is that you hug this inside completely and at a good speed. So to do that, it's very important to get good uh, trail breaking. And unfortunately, I have a bit of a minor lockup and you can see me go a bit deep into the corner and miss the apex slightly. But again, important to pick up the power early. And as you pick up the power, you be very smooth on the steering wheel on the exit because it's very easy to lose the rear through here, especially because 
ideally you're running a very aggressive turn and setup that won't have much rear traction just to maximize the chicanes or that's what i was doing anyway to go fast so again as i'm getting on the power i short shift the third gear to maximum traction run a bit wide like i said but the moment the car is straight you just put your foot onto the throttle flat out go over the curb, then sixth gear seventh gear and down the long back straight to what is probably one of the most satisfying corners you can have on like any video game racetrack <laughs> ever. I know there there are a lot of uh, people who dislike the corner. Personally, I love it. There is just so much pressure heading into it. And it's unique in that high speed corners don't usually require a lot of extreme precision, but this one does the wall of champions final chicane and this is where the whole lap builds up to like everything you've done you can lose it right here and yeah just since there's such a long wait as well you have all of these thoughts in your head thinking oh what if i make a mistake or whatever like in this that personally i i was I had a million things going in my head at the same time. One, I was frustrated on uh, having made the mistake at the hairpin and maybe, oh, I lost the 8.4 right there. And also, oh, I can't make afford to make a mistake here. So usually the advice is for these types of situations, don't overthink. My advice would be don't think at all. Like any thought will just disrupt you. You take this corner purely from just muscle memory, from practicing it, just from previous muscle memory and very important to cut it on both curbs really so um, ideally you want to be very smooth with the steering and the way to do that is with uh, how you downshift and as well as how you lift off the brakes so you don't want to do your steering with the actual steering wheel but more naturally with the rotation of the car because if you apply too much steering input the car just gets unstable through here and you'll get a messy exit so as minimal steering input as possible try to make it like a straight line and similar theme to prior uh i'm on the throttle even before i'm on the apex so very important to pick up the power early so as i'm going through the chicane you can attack the second curb a lot Maybe I overdid it a bit on this lap because you're going to see me run out wide. But anyway, this corner is a lot about mental rather than just driving talent because you, you can't take it safe into the Wall of Champions chicane. Like if you try to do that, you're just going to end up losing a lot of time. You have to be completely committed no matter what. And that's what I did on this lap with a lot of pressure, I must say. But even then... You know, uh, after you go past the second curb, you want to be very aggressive on the power and just run out completely wide onto the exit. Don't touch the wall. And you're going to see me even lose some time on the exit. I didn't quite do it perfectly. Maybe, maybe I should actually just play the whole thing again. Like, if you're ever in doubt, just break ever so slightly earlier than the previous step. But yeah, you have to be fully committed on the throttle, especially. So into there. A bit of a messy exit, but it was fine. And important, stay completely to the right-hand side, unlike the start of the lap. And you go across the line to finish a lap of Canada, 108.577. I was fairly satisfied with that. <laughs> so that places me number one on the new Alfa Romeo leaderboards, which is different than the leaderboards that was already in the game for the 2022 cars. But yeah, with a gap of eight tenths of a second which i know i'm good at this track but i'd like to think nobody's actually tried it yet because that just <laughs> looks a bit ridiculous to be honest but yeah i think this car is slightly faster than the 2022 car if you uh, set it up right and i will talk about that more in so one thing about this alfa romeo car is that it is significantly easier to get good traction out of the low speed corners compared to the 2022 cars so when you're building a setup, you should look forward to maximizing that. So you can see me running very high front wing. And that just gives me a lot of responsiveness in the chicanes, which helps there a lot. And I can do that because I know the rear end of the car would still be fine if I'm running a setup like this. So that's the logic behind the wings here. 
So onto the transmission, similar kind of story here, just uh, stemming from tr the traction being easier. Normally when you run 50% on diff, the car just doesn't accelerate smoothly and gets a lot of wheel spin. But in this car, I found that that's easier and you can run it as low as 50 or 51% at most tracks. So what that allows you to do is uh, get a lot of uh, rotation when you're accelerating out of the corners and it does make the traction a bit harder, but like I said, it's still possible. And I think one of my prior iterations of the setup had 51 on throttle differential, but I decided to move back to 54 because that's what I felt comfortable with and it was fine with the rest of the setup. And as always, keeping the off throttle differential at 50% as well, just for the maximum rotation mid corner. So onto the suspension geometry, there is nothing different here. This is just the standard right, right, left, left configuration. I didn't notice anything that was like stood out to me that was different to the 2022 car. Maybe if you want just more responsiveness and bite from the front end of the car, you can increase the front toe a bit, but like there is uh, nothing new to be looked at. So right, right, left, left as usual. So fairly similar story with the suspension itself as well, uh, one 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 five four, which is not like absurdly different from anything you would run in a twenty twenty two car. Um, so since I was running fairly aggressive wings, I didn't feel the need to run aggressive suspension as well. I felt that would just be overdoing it. But one thing I noticed as I was uh, trying out the setups that. If, because traction is better with this car, you can afford to run a higher rear anti roll bar, and that would also allow you to get more rotation mid corner. And it's something to consider doing. You can actually find pace from uh, increasing that. But I felt one 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 was fine because I was already pushing the wings a lot to get a lot of rotation, so it was okay. And as for the right height, I didn't really feel the need to up the front right tight more to get more straight line speed because I just felt like that added too much understeer to this setup. Pretty straightforward for the brakes and the tires as well. You want to run maximum brake pressure with the most reverse brake bias because that's just the fastest way on this game. And again, with the tires, uh, maximum rear pressure and minimum front pressure. And so yeah, that's about it for the setup. I think overall, this car can be slightly faster because since the traction is easier, you can go like more aggressive on the setup, like how I did with the wings here to get more turn in. And I think overall that would allow you to gain time. I mean, I haven't tried it on all tracks, but I think like, especially in tracks such as Canada and maybe a few other similar ones, I think you'll be able to go faster with the 2023 Alfa Romeo. And I'm interested to see if this handling carries over to the new game that's coming out in the summer, I think. So yeah, let me know if you enjoyed the video and if you'd like to see more track guys or any other kinds of videos. So I'll see you all next time.